Milwaukee Bucks, okay. uh, Phoenix Suns. It's, it's going to be a tricky one because Giannis might not play. Hyperextended uh, knee, it, it looked crazy, but they, they said that the test results show is not, no, no real damage or anything like that. He's listed as day-to-day. Um, if Giannis does not play, do you give the Bucks a chance of winning this series? No. Not at all. You don't think you don't think they, they got a chance without Giannis? You don't think we can get another twenty eight, uh, another thirty two point nine from from Brooke Lopez, Bobby Porter stepping up? No, it's over. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, uh, but you ain't got no hope for the. All right, so hold on. Let's go back for a second. Let's take it back. Atlanta Hawks versus Milwaukee. Now, I, I felt like even with Giannis going down, I still kind of thought that the Bucks. Had a better team than Trey, even if he if he actually came back. I thought that they should have still been able to win that series. Um, I think they just finally got brought back down to earth. Shout out to the Hawks, though. I think they had an amazing uh, run this season, but ultimately, I think they finally came across a team that was better than them. And even without Giannis, they got past. Have you heard anything in regards to Giannis that would lead us to believe that he may actually play in this finals? No. Nothing, nothing new. Uh, I hate to keep giving you the word no, um, but I have not heard anything uh, official or unofficial. Um, I know that uh, that that injury looked worse on camera than it did after he walked. Like, like the impact at first was like, whoa. Yeah. And then, then uh, you know, as you saw him kind of get up and walk and uh, go about getting to the visiting locker room uh, at, at State Farm Arena, you had hope he'd come back, but I think the Trey Young injury was was the catalyst in that series for, for everything. Um, and I think that the, the good thing that the Hawks had going in their favor in that game was that they had, like, what, a 10-point, 12-point lead in the game without them. So, you know, the Bucks had to prove uh, that they could beat uh, the, the, the Hawks without Trey Young. They did that. Uh, but the Suns aren't the Hawks, yeah, and not at all. Um, and, and, I, and I think that when you look at that team, man, you know there were times where you may have questioned the the uh, Clippers' ability uh, to make some things happen. As I said on your show uh, a couple months ago, um, that I felt that the Clippers had a chance uh, to make it, particularly with the addition of Rajon Rondo. Uh, but I think also when you look at the Bucks, the Bucks by far exceeded many folks' expectations pretty much because of that Brooklyn series and, you know, Kyrie Irving's injury. Um, and, and ultimately, um, when it came down to it, also um, James Harden's injury. He played 43 seconds in game one, and, you know, they tried to play catch-up. That security guard incident was a thing. Um, this is a lot of factors that had nothing. Well, some had to do with basketball, but many of it had to do with the negative negativity side of it, particularly with injuries and all those other things. But, you know, for the Bucks to get to where they are, you, you also have to commend them and, 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 and give them their just due because, you know, they played in an Eastern conference where uh, everybody, it was a foregone conclusion um, that um, they thought it was a foregone conclusion that it was going to be Nets, Sixers representing the East and, you know, Lakers in the West. And, you know, I've, I've spoken to folks on a Western Conference team that feel as though the Suns need to take care of their business because it's going to be all about Brooklyn and, and L.A. as in the Clippers, or excuse me, as in the Lakers next year, particularly with a healthy Anthony Davis and, and a healthy LeBron James and, you know, a healthy Kyrie Irving as well on Brooklyn side. So, yeah. Yeah. I I think this is the best chance that Chris Paul is going to get to win a ring outside of maybe if he had, you know, that trade that went through to the Lakers a couple years ago. But other than that, this is the best chance he's gotten. Um, I, you know, I know people talk about the route that they took to get there. You know, pretty much every team missing one of their stars along the way. But, you know, but I still say, you, you can only play who's in front of you, um, and they got the job done. Is Chris Paul finals MVP in this series? They got to play it first. <laughs> hey, man, come 
more now. They got to play it first. They do. They do got to play it. But but you, but do you think that Chris Paul? Because I mean, Chris Paul has done some amazing things in this playoffs. The way he closed out uh, the series against the, the the Clippers, an amazing night. Um, but the the best player doesn't always come up at, with the Finals MVP. I I, I know for for Chris Paul's uh, for his legacy, I think that it would be great. I think he would get a huge boost because because one one of the things we're going to talk about are the top five point guards all time in where a championship win puts Chris Paul all time. Um, but I, Devin Booker has been been playing very good for his first first postseason, and if he's averaging twenty eight, you know, five and five in the series, that might be hard for somebody to vote another direction. Yeah, it's going to be kind of like that Iguodala situation where, you know, in 2015, he was the MVP, but he wasn't even the best player in the whole finals. It was LeBron. Yeah. And you weren't giving it to Steph at that point. Steph got the award for the most beautiful family in the world, you know, at that point. That was the whole <laughs> Raleigh Curry. Shout out to Raleigh Curry. Era. Yeah. So I, I think, you know, as, as it relates to Devin Booker, yeah, I think you're on to something there. But I also think that, um, you know, when you look at, the Nets, excuse me, when you look at the, the Suns, I keep saying Nets. When you look at the Suns, that's how, you know, I'm tired from all the writing I've been doing throughout the playoffs, but when you look at the Suns and just the, the, the buildup of their, their their team, I mean, it's not just Chris Paul, and I think that's what gets lost in translation. I mean, this this Suns team, everybody talks about the eight straight games they won in the bubble, and, um, you know, I use this analogy often, you know, uh, Booker and, and – um, Aiton, DeAndre Aiton, that is. Uh, He's playing great right now as well. We're part of a, a, a cake that was already baked. Chris Paul was the icing on that cake. And, um, you know, when you look at that team and what they've been able to do uh, and just adding Chris Paul to the puzzle, I mean, it, it, it was significant. As you saw my reporting last offseason, you know, the Sixers, uh, the Knicks, uh, the Bucks, you know, like it's, it's – I'll tell you, like Giannis – had a meeting with the Bucks ownership uh, before he signed that extension. It was Labor Day weekend. And, you know, he had a list of names of guys that he wanted the team with. Uh, and I'll tell you that Chris Paul and James Harden were both on that list. And Harden nor Paul are, are on the team um, that they played with last year anymore. And uh, that's a whole different conversation as it relates to just the, the ultimate fall of uh, the Houston Rockets. Yeah. Um, particularly with Daryl Morey now in Philadelphia, James Harden in Brooklyn, uh, Chris Paul in, in the NBA Finals representing the Suns, and P.J. Tucker in Milwaukee. Yep. Uh, and, you know, the fact that Tucker and Paul are in a finals appearance after leaving Houston, like that's a whole interesting story there. Um, but I'll add this specifically to your question. Um, I do think that the Suns have a good uh, team on paper. They also have the uh, the blessings of um, good coaching under Monty Williams, uh, and 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 his story is so significant mm -hmm. where he where he is now. And I remember you know at Bally the first story that I penned uh, was actually about the Suns as a whole. And I talked about Monty Williams and talked with people within you know that organization who uh, meaning the Pelicans organization that you know that grew with him. Like most people, they all say to me the same thing. I don't have one bad word to say about him. Yeah. And um, I think that's significant specifically because um, in a day and age where social media and just relationships and everything, you know, that, that's interesting. I'll also add that his time with the Pelicans, you know, he, he wanted um, Anthony Davis to be the next Bill Russell and play at the five in New Orleans. And, you know, Davis wanted to be that slasher, th three, four, five combo. And uh, I'm going off on a tangent, but just to see uh, Monty Williams and then even James Jones I mean, in a position that, uh, he's in. I think it's it's a great story, and um, it's good to see. And that's that's on both sides. I think if it's one thing I'm kind of disappointed about, I'm disappointed um, that the Hawks didn't make it because I like their story. I liked their um, – nobody expected them to get as far as they did. I don't think many people expected them to, to beat the Knicks, and they did, and then to beat the Sixers, a highly, highly respected and coveted uh, franchise and you know it, it's 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 great, but you know Milwaukee did their thing, and you got to give credit where credit is due. Yeah, especially you know 
winning them last two games without Giannis being there, you got to give them, give them that. Um, I see. I don't. I, with the thing, my issue with the Hawks was, I think you know, and I like Trey Young, but I think he was just doing, he was doing too much talking to you know the shimmies and doing all, like, you know, Steph does it, but Steph is a two time. MVP, three-time NBA championship. You know it's okay when 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 Chef do the little shimmy, but I was like, come on, Trey, you got you got to you got to win something first before you start doing all that shimmying because you get humble real fast in this league. And you know, sure enough, they at they back at home. Um, in regards to Monty Williams, I, I think he's he's a great coach. And I'm so happy for him. Um, I always go back. Uh, in regards to Monty, back when. He was with uh, New Orleans on the first go round, and I was watching a, I forget what was the show I was watching on NBA TV, but they were covering Monty Williams talking to the players, and he wasn't talking to them about basketball. He was talking to them about life, and just things that you know they need to be aware of as far as you know just entourages and money and, and different things like that. So he was just giving them game as opposed to just saying you know my job is coach. Anything that goes on outside his basketball court really don't you know have no concern to me. But when you're talking about a group of young black men and him being a leader of those young black men, I love the fact that he took it far beyond his job as a as a basketball coach and was giving them those young guys those life lessons. So I always have a a, a, a high regard for Monty Williams, you know. Plus, you know, anytime it's a black head coach, I gotta go for the for the black head coach because you know we don't always get those positions. We don't even always get. The, the the a fair shot at getting those positions. So anytime it's a, it's a brother Agreed. at the helm, I, I'm I'm all for that. I got to support that. And again, you know, C, CP3 been in the league a long time. He's one of my favorite players, one of the top players. So you know, I, I'm I'm happy for him. At this point, you better get the job done though. Especially if Giannis does not play, you have to. There's no excuse for the Suns to not win this this uh this series. 